In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. We welcome you to our spiritual exercises program of St. Ignatius of Leola. And as always, and especially today, let's start by inviting Mary, who is the mother of God, the mother of church, and our mother to be with us. As we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and bless the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Now let's invite my friends, the, our spiritual director, to be with us. We're humble students, disciples of the Master. And the Master Jesus is sending us the Paraclete, the Wonderful Counselor, the Consoler, the Sweet Guest of the Soul, the Finger of God, the Gift of Gifts, the Father of Orphans, Father of the Poor, the Interior Master, This is also the sanctifier. He who makes us holy. And let's be honest, as St. Paul says, we don't really know how to pray as we ought. But it's the Holy Spirit who with ineffable groans helps us to say, Abba, Father. And that's our spiritual director, the Holy Spirit. And he's a mutual bond of love between the Father and the Son. So let's sing to the Holy Spirit and humbly beg him to give us a lot of light, a lot of peace, a lot of joy. And that he would set our hearts on fire with love for God. And to give us a real desire to want to pray. We'll feel this desire to want to spend that hour with the Lord every day. We get to know Him, love Him, and serve Him with all of our hearts. <clears throat> so I invite all of you to unite with me to humbly, and I say humbly, implore our spiritual master, our spiritual teacher to, to accompany us, to be with us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me, mold me, Fill me, use me, he, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Once again, Spirit of the living God, Fall afresh on us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Melt us, mold us, fill us, Use us, Spirit of the Living God, fall afresh on us, fall afresh on us, fall afresh on us. Well, Lady Fatima, pray for us. St. Joseph, 
pray for us. Saint Ignatius Loyola, pray for us. All God's angels and saints, pray for us. We welcome you all to the Spiritual Exercises program. And today I'd like to cover various topics with you. First is we celebrate the feast day of Our Lady Fatima today. Very important feast day for us as Catholics. The month of May is the month of Mary. In the very heart of May we celebrate Our Lady Fatima. She appeared to three little children. Jacinta, Francisco, and Lucia. They were shepherd children. 1916, the guardian angel appeared to these three children. In the third apparition, the three little children had an apparition of the angel who was kneeling down prostrate before a chalice and a host. The angel told them to receive from the chalice and the host and to offer that communion and reparation for the many sacrileges against the Blessed Sacrament. Jacinta Francisco took from the chalice and Lucy, the host, the chalice because these children, the little ones, would be taken to heaven in a very short time. Lucy would spend more time in 1917, Our Lady appeared to these children, these shepherd children, these simple children that didn't know how to read and write. Jacinta and Francisco would never learn. Lucia would eventually go in the convent and she would learn to read and write. So she appeared to the children on the 13th, May 13th, all the way through October 13th. Six apparitions. And the messages are so important. Now more than ever. Exactly three years ago today, exactly three years ago today, Jacinta and Francisco were canonized. Means that they were proclaimed to be officially saints in heaven by Pope Francis, actually in Fatima, in Portugal, to the youngest saints in the Catholic Church. They can teach us a lot, as well as Lucy, she can teach us a lot. I'd like to highlight some of the essential messages, and then we'll go back to our, our conversation, the exercise. But you'll see the message I give today is very much in sync or in harmony with what we're meditating upon this week. What is the message of Fatima? First is Our Lady is going to appear and talk to the children and talk not simply to the children but to the church as well as the world at large. And the first thing Our Lady says is Try to stop sinning. Try to stop sinning. Because God is already too much offended. Over the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about God's mercy, but we're talking also about the reality of sin. Two days ago, when we went through the five steps of making a good confession, 
The third step was to avoid the near occasion of sin. Second step was contrition. First was examination of conscience. And the exercises that we're doing are related to mercy, God's forgiveness. They're related also to Christ healing the wounded. And that wounded person is you and me. And it's related to our identifying ourselves with Zacchaeus. And today is going to be Bartimaeus, the blind beggar. So we have to step back and rewind the film of our life and see not only our sin, but what is the pattern of our sin? What has led us to sin? We're going to be talking explicitly before too long of the rules for discernment. Desolation. Des desolation is a state of soul where we, we experience a lack of faith, a lack of hope, a lack of charity, a certain sadness, a certain depression, a certain disorientation and that's the time in which the devil tempts us most so when you're going through your life you see yourself as Zacchaeus you see yourself as the woman of the well you see yourself as Bartimaeus the blind beggar come to terms with the fact that probably you fell into sin giving into your kryptonite and was preceded by a state of desolation. Last week we meditated upon the capital sins. We we're seeing the wolf and the lamb within us. And we we're begging for a, diff a difficult grace, but a very necessary grace, and this grace of self-knowledge, really to get to know who we are. Self-knowledge is painful, but it's indispensable if we're going to overcome our major weaknesses. So Lady Fatima said, stop sinning so as not to offend God anymore. Every time you're tempted to sin and you say no, you're saying yes to the love of God, and you're consoling the heart of Jesus you're consoling the heart of Mary. You're taking the crown of thorns off Jesus' head. You're taking the crown off the heart of Mary. Maybe see it that way. Maybe that can help you more. Because sin is not simply breaking a law, but sin is breaking the heart of God. Sin is hurting the one we love. Fulton Sheen. So that's the, one of the first messages of, of Mary is uh, we, we have to recognize that we are sinners, but we have to try to avoid our sin and avoid the near occasion of sin. Second message that Mary said at Fatima. Is that we have to pray. We have to pray. And that's why we're here. That's why we're doing the exercises on a daily basis. And I'm trying to encourage you. Prayer is so very important. Your holy hour is so very important. Your sanctification your conversion, your perseverance and grace depends upon prayer. And I really believe you people have been with me this past few weeks. God is calling you to a higher degree of holiness. He's calling you 
like the children of Adam, he's calling you to be special instruments to save many souls. I really believe that. God is calling you to be special instruments to save many souls. Pray. Over these past few weeks, we've talked a lot about prayer. I've given you the method, Lecture Divina. I give you some advice, some hints. I, I'm talking constantly, trying to coach you on, trying to encourage you to pray and to persevere. But I said this. One of the greatest graces I ever received in my life, and I'm humbly, eternally grateful for this, is that ever since I was a child, probably because of Mary's presence as well as my mother, is that I've always had a real desire to pray. I've always liked to pray. Very rarely have I ever met anyone that say that that told me I really like to pray. Now I can teach you how to pray. I can give you the tools. I can give you the method. I can give you the biblical passage. I can you give you the explanation. I can give you the commentary. I can give you all the tools but I cannot give you the desire to pray. That you have to beg, I would say, beg Mary on her feast day, Our Lady of Fatima. Beg Mary and beg the Holy Spirit right now that you have a real desire within your heart to pray. Not to diminish your prayer or cut corners or skip holy hours, or throw in the towel with the exercises, but that you'll actually start to add more time to your prayer. And not only to pray, maybe more time, but praying with greater fervor. That sometimes is what is lacking, is we're lacking fervor. You start a fire, and you don't keep feeding the fire with wood, leaves, or debris, that fire, it goes out. We, had, we have to feed the flame. We have to feed the flame. So that's Mary's message, is that we have to avoid sin. We have to pray. The third is Mary tells us that we have to sacrifice, offer up sacrifices. Sacrifices for several reasons. One of the reasons is that if we really do love God, and we should love what God loves. What God loves, my friends, more than anything else on earth, God loves souls and the salvation of souls. In a Mass I celebrated recently, I tried to give you a, a scenario story to show you the value of prayer and sacrifice. My friends, I really believe in your case, there will be many souls that will be saved if you're faithful to your holy hour, you're faithful to your rosary, you're faithful to God, you're faithful to sacrifices. Souls, immortal souls, depend upon you. Many of your family members, 
Many of your family members have maybe walked away from God or living very mediocre spiritual lives. Who's going to set that flame? It's God, but God wants to use you. You're called to be the conduit. You're called to be the bridge. You're called to be the intermediary. See, here's a story that I've created related to Fatima that many souls will be saved if we offer to Jesus through the Immaculate Heart of Mary these generous sacrifices. Here's the scenario. Okay, try to imagine um, somewhere maybe in, in China, very far away from us. There's a 95-year-old man that's in the hospital dying. He was baptized more than 90 years ago. He made his first communion. But he's drifted away from the church. And he's very sick. And it's 9 o'clock at night. You're kind of tired. And you hear an, an interior prompting, an interior voice. Pray the rosary. And you say to that voice, well, I already prayed a rosary. I don't want to be a fanatic. People have called me a fanatic and I don't want it to be true. So you hear the voice again, pray the rosary. You say, well, you know, I'll pray the rosary tomorrow. I already said my rosary. The voice comes back again. Pray the rosary. It's important. So with a little bit of resistance, you go into your room, light a candle, pull out your rosary, and you pray the rosary. During the rosary, you're kind of tired, you're kind of distracted, you experience some dryness. In other words, your, your emotional state is kind of low. But you will go you go against the grain and you pray the rosary when you finish the rosary grace flows through our prayer and especially our prayer goes through mary who's the mediatrix of all grace she's a channel by which graces flow to the world in abundance that 95 year old chinese man 95 year old Chinese man has an inspiration which came through your prayer to call a priest. So he asked the nurse to call a priest, and not too far away, the priest is in residence and he comes into the hospital and says, Yes, sir, can I help you? And the man says, well, you know, Father, it's embarrassing to say this, but I'd like to go to confession. It's been, Father, it's been more than 85 years. The priest says, that's fine. It's never too late. Our God is a God of mercy. So he opens up his heart and, his, and he just unloads all the sins that he can remember after 85 years. And the priest said, would you like to receive communion? Do you have communion? Yes. The body of Christ. Sir, you look you, you look like you're, you know, you're kind of weak now. Yes. Would you, like, would you like to receive the anointing of the sick? Yes. And the apostolic pardon? Of course, Father. So he goes to confession. He received communion after more than 85 years. He receives the anointing of the sick. He receives the apostolic pardon, which grants a plenary indulgence. And that same night, this Chinese man, he dies. And his soul soars to heaven. It was God's grace that brought him to conversion. But the conduit, the instrument, the bridge, 
the channel by which the grace flowed was through Mary, but also you were the one that invoked Mary. There we have one of the essential messages of Our Lady Fatima, to pray and to offer sacrifices. And to offer these sacrifices in a special way for the conversion of sinners especially for the conversion of deathbed sinners. Those sacrifices are important. When Our Lady appeared to the children, they said she appeared the 13th of every month. The children were offering sacrifices. And one of the sacrifices that the children were offering was something very simple, but a real sacrifice. And it's Lucy, uh, the oldest of the three visionaries, Lucia de los Santos, there was a, a, a wagon that passed by and a rope fell on the ground. The rope was probably pretty big. So she thought, well, maybe I can use this rope as a, as a means of sacrifice. So she took part of the rope and she wrapped it around her, her wrist. And the rope that had frayed, uh, it started to rub against her wrist and it caused her considerable pain. So she had an idea. Our Lady wants us to offer up sacrifices. I know what I can do. The rope is pretty big. So she decided to cut the rope in three pieces and then give two of the pieces to her cousins, Jacinta and Francisco. And then they decided that they would wrap the rope around their waists. So they'd be walking with the rope around their waist and the rope would be digging into their little bodies and irritating their bodies and causing them considerable pain. So a lady, when she appeared in September, she said, God is very pleased with your sacrifices. Good work. God is very pleased with those sacrifices. However, God doesn't want you to wear the rope at night. Because if you wear the rope at night, then you won't be able to sleep. When you get up, you won't be able to work well in the field with the sheep. So they decided not to wear, not to wear the rope at night. But you see how these little children, my friends, these little children, they were uneducated. They were shepherd children. They came from very humble families. They were capable of doing great acts of sacrifice because they loved Mary. Mary loved them. They loved the Blessed Mother so much. And they loved God. And they love Mary and they love God and they love what Mary and God love, love most. What does Mary and God love most? The salvation of immortal souls. Another reason 
behind the sacrifice. This is a very important point for us in your prayer life. Is the sacrifice that they offer, and we're called to offer, should be offered also in reparation. So hopefully this will enrich your prayer experience as you meditated upon Zacchaeus yesterday. In which Zacchaeus, you saw, as we spoke about yesterday, he um, willingly wanted to follow Christ, and they started to crit criticize him because he was a tax collector. And he said, look, I give half of my money to the poor. Then he said, well, if I have defrauded anyone, and I promise I'm going to give four times as much. So we see in Zacchaeus what Our Lady Fatima was talking about. Is not only do we offer our sacrifices for sinners, but also to repair for the damage that we've done because of our sins. Zacchaeus was very generous as were these three children. They were very generous. And their generosity became manifest not simply in words, but in concrete actions. So it, it must be with us. We have to tell God we love him by our words, by our prayer, yes. That's the most important. But also by concrete fruits. Jesus in the gospel today says, I am the vine and you are the branches. My father comes and he prunes away the dead branches so that you can produce fruit and fruit in abundance. I come that you have life and have life in abundance. That's the gospel for today. John chapter 15. The image of the vine and the branches. The branches are called to bring forth fruit, not to be withered dead branches, but fruitful branches. That's the message of Fatima. You're called to be fruitful. So reparation, we have to repair for our sins. And when we talked about confession, we talked about the five steps, the last fifth is we're called to carry out the penance to repair for our sins. Another essential message of Fatima, very much in harmony with with the exercises that we're carrying out in these weeks. Is it Mary? With respect to prayer, she wants us to pray the rosary. Our Lady appeared May 13th, which is today, all the way through to October 13th. Every day that Mary prayed, she said, pray the rosary. Pray the rosary. Pray the rosary. Then on October 13th, Lucia was saying, can you please give us your name? She said, I will give you my name. She said, I am Our Lady of the Rosary. At Mexico in Guadalupe, she says, No soy yo tu madre. She says, I am your mother. At Lourdes, she says, I am the Immaculate Conception. But at Fatima, she says, I am the Lady of the Rosary. Her identity is Our Lady of the Rosary. She wants us to pray the Rosary. Message of Fatima is so important. Our Lady of the Rosary can save us from so many dangers. 
listen to this this uh, Fatima story. It goes even a, even be beyond the children in 1917. In 1981, by the way, next Monday, which is May 18th, 2020, we celebrate the 100th anniversary of the birthday of John Paul II. Yes, John Paul II was actually born on May 18th. 1920 so next monday will be may 18th 2020 the hundredth anniversary of john paul ii do any of you know what happened 39 years ago and 38 years ago all of this is related to the message of fatima and we're going to see the power, the power of the intercession of Mary, Our Lady of Fatima, Our Lady of the Rosary. This is what happened. John Paul II was Pope for less than three years because he was elected Pope in October of 78. So he was Pope for two and a half years. He was uh, 61 years of age and he was coming out of the Basilica of St. Peter. He was greeting the people. A very loving Pope. And he was embracing a child greeting the people in a very friendly manner, as was his custom. Then all of a sudden, you could hear a couple of shots from the crowd, and you saw John Paul II dressed in his white habit. He fell back, and as you look close, he was stained with his own blood because he was shot by the would-be assassin, Mahedma Agma, Aga. And it looked like he was, it looked like he was about to die. He cried out to Mother Mary. They rushed him to the hospital. And it looked like he was he was about to die because he had lost a lot of blood and the people were praying for him around the clock the people were praying the rosary as the people prayed during the battle of lepanto under the supervision of saint Pope Pius v they were praying for john paul ii it looked like he was not going to make it But he, he did make it. That was May 13th, 1981. Christmas Eve that same year, he had already recovered enough to be able to travel. And what he did was he went to the prison where that man was. And they allowed him to go into the prison. And he bent over and he embraced this man who tried to kill him. And he forgave Mahatma Aga, who planned to kill John Paul II. Wow. So it was through Mary's prayers that he was saved and through Mary's prayers that he was moved to manifest one of the most powerful, beautiful acts of mercy in the history of the church, the history of the world. And you can actually see this on YouTube.
38 years ago, 1982, a year later, May 13th. Now, John Paul II was a little bit stronger now, and he traveled this time to Fatima. And he entered into the church in Fatima, where you can see the beautiful, the beautiful statue of Our Lady of Fatima. And he knelt down. He knelt down in front of the statue of Our Lady of Fatima, which is a majestic, beautiful statue. And Our Lady had her hands folded. This is a statue. And John Paul II knelt down and he had his rosary. And he got up with his rosary and he touched the statue. Now, Our Lady Fatima also has a crown because Mary is queen. We say, Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. And he carried out a gesture that will never be forgotten. He got up after praying to her. And he put something that was in the crown of Mary. And what was it? It was something about this size. It looked like a piece of metal. You know what it was? It was actually a bullet. What type of bullet? Well, it was a bullet that the would-be assassin shot that went right into the intestines of John Paul II. The doctor or surgeon was able to extract that metal bullet, and it was given to John Paul II. And he took that bullet and he put it in the crown of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And one of our priests, Father Larry, was actually there in Fatima a few years back. And he was able to see the crown and the bullet. And it wasn't something small. It was big. But a beautiful gesture. Beautiful gesture. One of the best books ever written on the biography, the life of Pope John Paul II, was written by the writer George Weigel, who, who wrote a really good life story of John Paul II called Witness of Hope. And the author George, George Weigel has a chapter in his biography of John Paul II on this topic. In John Paul II, he admitted, he confessed, with utmost sincerity, he said that the evil was very present when that man shot the bullet. And he aimed perfectly. The bullet hit part of my finger. And he said that the the bullet was was moved by a fraction, by an invisible hand. And who was the one that moved it? It was the Blessed Virgin Mary. Because that was May 13th, 1981, 39 years ago. May 13th, 1982. The year following, John Paul II went there, kneeling down, pulling out his rosary, touching his rosary to the statue of Mary, and placing that bullet in her crown. And to this very day, 
in the crown of Our Lady of Fatima can still be seen the bullet that was in the intestines of John Paul II. And he said very clearly, very clearly, evil exists, but the Blessed Mother was able to move that bullet so that I wouldn't die. Therefore, he attributed the salvation of his life to the intercession and intervention of Our Lady of the Rosary, of Our Lady of Fatima. Friends, we are living in very difficult times. We're living in very difficult times. Very difficult times. Now more than ever, we got a prayer rosary. We got a prayer rosary. Because the family that prays together stays together. A world at prayer is a world at peace. Those words come from Venerable Patrick Payton, the Rosary Priest. John Paul II in the year 2002 beginning his 25th anniversary. So it's interesting. John Paul II was shot in 1981, already 2002. He's going to be Pope until 2005. The third longest pontificate in the history of the church. John Paul II is going to write a papal letter on the Rosary, which is called the Blessed Virgin Mary and the Rosary. And he's going to introduce the beautiful luminous mysteries, almost as if there was a missing link. You had this meditating going from the cave to the cross without the public miss the public life of Christ. So John Paul II adds the luminous mysteries. But speaking about the time, the perilous times in which we're living, we're living in difficult times, my friends. We've never lived in a world with more dangers for children and teenagers today in the modern world in which we live. So now more than ever, we have to have recourse to Mary. In that document, John Paul II He mentioned several saints. Well, let me tell you the, the story of one of these saints. And this is going to be related to what you're going to be meditating upon in a couple of weeks. The two standards. Standard of Satan, the standard of Christ. John Paul II in the Evangelium, uh, the Gospel of Life, speaks about the culture of death and the Gospel of Life. You got the evil spirits and you got the good spirits and they're working on us. Many of us are tempted to give up our prayer life that comes from the bad spirit. But in that document, John Paul II gives a list of saints that had a great love for the rosary. Padre Pio, Colby, St. Therese, St. Louis de Montfort. These are saints that had great love for Mary. But he mentions someone that maybe none, none of you have ever heard before. He's not a saint yet, but he's a blessed. And listen to what happened as a result of the rosary. The name of this person was Bartolo Longo. Bartolo Longo was born in Italy, near the city of Naples, by a practicing Catholic family. 
But he went to the university to study law. While he was there, he fell into a bad lot, and he drifted away from his faith. Basically, he abandoned his faith. And this group that he was, he was associating with was a satanic group. And he got more and more involved in this satanic group. And he arrived at a point where he was so immersed in Satanism that he actually he actually consecrated himself as a priest of Satan. For example, I'm a Catholic priest who was ordained by John Paul II, by the way. And he consecrated himself to Satan. See how God intervened through Mary. There's a Dominican priest that heard about him and heard about his difficulties, so he tried to start to pray and fast for Bartolo Longo. So Bartolo Longo had an inspiration to return to the church through what we talked about two days ago, through the sacrament of confession. So he got enough courage to examine his conscience. He went to confession and apparently made a good confession. But afterward, the devil attacked him. The devil attacked him and said, look, you sold your soul to me. You belong to me. You can't get your soul back. You belong to me. In the depths of his heart, he heard a voice. He said, Bartolo, 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 you want to be saved, pray the rosary and propagate the rosary. And that soft, gentle, but insistent voice was probably the voice of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Our Lady of the Rosary. If you want to be saved, Pray the rosary and propagate the rosary. That will be your salvation. So Bartolo heeded that message and he started to pray the rosary and he fell in love with the rosary. But he didn't want to keep that devotion to himself. He really believed that he was called to be the Apostle of the Rosary. So by, by talking with priests and the bishop, there was a church that was established in the city of Naples. And the name of the church, the sanctuary was Our Lady of Pompeii or Our Lady of the Rosary. It's turned out to be one of the most famous Marian Rosary sanctuaries in the whole world. John Paul II went there more than once. Pope Benedict went there. Pope Francis went there, praying to Our Lady of the Rosary. And in there, if you ever have the chance, city of Naples, Pompeii, you're going to see a beautiful painting and which you see Our Lady of the Rosary is sitting there, crowned as queen. And below you can see two saints. And one saint is a man, the other is a woman. The man, his name is Saint Dominic Guzman, who founded the Dominicans. And the basic charism of the Dominicans is to pray the rosary and to propagate the, propagate the rosary. The other is a woman. The name of that woman is Catherine of Siena, who is a lay Dominican, a stigmatic. And she also was instrumental in promoting the rosary. 
finish this story, this Bartolo Longo, he dedicated his life to praying the rosary, loving the rosary, propagating the rosary, spreading far and wide the prayer of the rosary. And he died. And he was beatified. One more miracle and he'll be canonized. By being beatified means he is a blessed within the Catholic Church. So look at this. This man got involved in Satanism. He practiced Satanism. This man was consecrated as a priest, of, a priest of Satan, satanic priest. And he was converted and now he's a blessed saint in the Catholic Church. And it all came about, all came about through the powerful intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And by praying the rosary, his soul was no longer belonging to the devil, but his soul belonged to God through the hands of the Blessed Virgin Mary. So my friends, today we celebrate Our Lady Fatima, May 13th. Today you're going to be meditating on a beautiful biblical passage. And it's Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus, the blind beggar. We are all in a certain sense, we are Bartimaeus. You have to become that Bartimaeus. You have to become like Jacinta, Francisco, and Lucia. You have to recognize that, we have to recognize rather, that we're all blind. Sometimes we're blinded by our passions. Sometimes we're blinded by sensuality. Sometimes we're blinded by our own lustfulness. Sometimes we're blinded by our impatience. Sometimes we're blinded by our, our greed. Sometimes we're blinded by, by our anger. Sometimes we're blinded by our envy or jealousy. We all can identify with the blind Bart Bartimaeus. But don't forget, he's a blind man, but he also he is the beggar. You gotta put those both together. The three Bs, I like it. Ah, there it is. Blind, beggar, Bartimaeus, the three Bs, yeah. We all have the three Bs. The blind, beggar, Bartimaeus. My, my friends, there's a doctor in the house. And that doctor has a mother. Who is the doctor in the house? The doctor. The divine physician. His name is Jesus, the son of Mary. So let's go to him as the blind person that we are. And remember the words that he taught us in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Ask, and you will receive. Seek, and you'll find. Knock, and the door will be open. Whoever asks, receives. Whoever seeks, finds. Whoever knocks, the door will be open. Let us turn to Jesus, like Bartimaeus, through the Blessed Virgin Mary. Let's beg for three graces. A grace to reject sin in our lives. By saying no to sin, we say yes to the love of God. Let us pray for the grace 
to offer up sacrifices generously. Many souls will be saved by your sacrifices. But most important, let's beg for the grace to really desire to pray, to desire to make our holy hour even more, and a desire to pray the most holy rosary, because the family that prays together stays together, and a world at prayer is a world at peace. The Almighty God bless you in honor of Our Lady of Fatima and John Paul II and the children of Fatima in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.